Greetings and welcome back to the channel. You guys are watching Unbiased Magic Reviews, the most objective magic review channel here on YouTube. As you guys know, I have no affiliations with any major magic companies. Nobody is sending me this stuff so I can be unfiltered, honest, upfront, and tell you exactly how it is. Today, I'm taking a look at Craig Petty's Penguin Live lecture that came out last week. And you can pick this up for $40. You're going to get over three hours of a lecture where Craig Petty is going to perform 10 effects. And then he explains them with Eric Tate, who hosts it. And it's at this point that I really miss Dan Harlan because it got very annoying listening to Eric Tate constantly say that's so good after every single effect. I remember Dan Harlan would only interrupt the performer when he was pointing out something that even the performer wasn't aware of. So you really miss Dan Harlan at this point. Anyway, Craig Petty should be well known to all you guys that are into magic. He has a very successful YouTube channel here. And he used to be part of the original Wizard product review back in the day. I purchased many of his coin products. They were excellent. And I think Craig Petty overall is a great sleight of hand performer and I think he's a great magician. Um, so I really had high hopes for this. And if we look at the Penguin reviews here, you could see that this is getting five stars on Penguin. So you have to ask yourself, why did I rate this as 2.08 out of five, which is very unfavorable. And I would tell you guys that I would recommend that you don't pick this up actually. I found it very disappointing and I think that most of the material that you're going to learn on here is not really useful. It's not practical and you're probably not going to go through the trouble to try to hunt down the gaffes and gimmicks you need to be able to put them together for these effects. You know, I felt that this lecture, it really felt like you were learning some routines from a working magician. There's really nothing novel or original here. He's taking uh, different concepts and different effects of other magicians and putting them together to create routines, stuff that all of us do all the time, except we don't charge each other for it usually. <laughs> um, plus, I felt that many of the effects on here are really, like I said, not practical and overworked. It felt like he was trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer and just some simple examples for you. His card at any number effect employs three decks, one of which has to be a memorized deck. So if you're gonna go through the trouble to use a memorized deck, you're not gonna do all of this crazy stuff. It's just not practical and you're not gonna do it. Um, are you really gonna buy two invisible decks, take them apart and put them all together to be able to do one cards across effect? I don't think so. Um, that's not going to happen when there's so many different versions of cards across you can do with just a regular deck. Um, so like I said, this stuff is not practical. I thought that the presentation and the pattern that he used in his own performances was really, it was cringeworthy almost and kind of offensive. I think he tries to come off as being funny, but it really felt like kind of offensive. I mean, at one point he had a coin in his hand and he was doing this and he says to the spectator, you know what this is called? And then she like looks at him and he's like, it's called turning your hand over. I'm like, oh my, why would you say such a thing? And he's like, you know why this is called the three coin effect? Cause it uses three coins. I mean, come on. It's just kind of corny, you know? So presentation and pattern wise, I was like, oh, that's not really good. There's just so many other better Penguin Live lectures out there. If you're gonna pick up a Penguin lecture, I would recommend instead of this, you pick up a lecture like either from David Williamson, from Wayne Hoochin, from Christian Engblom, from Ose Perlman. I could go on and on. There were so many other much better Penguin live lectures where you're going to learn tips how to improve your magic. You're going to learn really great magic theory, presentational tips, and the routines are just so much better and so much more practical. Anyway. I'm going to give you guys a rundown of each of these routines, kind of give you the pros and cons, and then I'm going to give you guys my rating and then just some simple final thoughts. 
Um, just some things you're probably wondering about, like difficulty wise, this stuff ranges from beginner to intermediate. Nothing is really crazy difficult to perform. Almost every effect uses a gimmick or a gaff in some way, and probably you don't have most of them, but we're gonna get into that. And um, none of this stuff for the most part can be examined. So those are probably some basic questions you have. Let's take a look at the effects and then we'll get into the rating. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of the 10 routines. I'm gonna to try to keep it very basic, just give you a couple of pointers on it. Here or there, I may give you some alternatives. So the first effect is called celebrity prediction. So you hand out a prediction in the beginning, you ask the person to think of a celebrity and a playing card, and you show them that your predictions have come true. That's what the ad copy says, and what this is really is, this is the Fred effect. If you're familiar with the Fred effect, then you'll know exactly what that is. Here, Craig Petty, again, has overworked the effect because he's using one major gimmick that you guys are well aware of, and then the other one is actually a marketed effect, which is called Celebrity Pressage. So you're gonna have to have that effect, or you're gonna have to buy that product if you wanna perform it the same way here. And essentially what you're doing is, you're having the person think of a playing card freely and then you give them a book of celebrities and they go through the book to make a selection. So you're basically using a book force. Um, it's very impractical. You're not gonna be carrying around a book and a deck just to do one effect. I would recommend instead that you just check out the Fred effect and one version of it that's pretty good is John Bannon's effect, which is called Fred by any other name. You may wanna take a look at that. The second effect is called pick a pocket and the description they have is a pseudo pickpocketing demonstration that will convince your audiences that you have real pickpocketing skills. The problem is that you don't use any pockets. No. Craig Petty presents this with two different wallets. One of them is highly gimmicked and then another marketed effect from Richard Sanders, which is called Extreme Burn, which you may be familiar with. The funny thing is that this exact effect concept, there was somebody about two months ago that emailed me because they were asking me about what Shogun wallet I recommend. Now, Craig Petty uses a totally different gimmicked wallet in this effect, which you probably have laying around at home. Although there was a friend who messaged me because they wanted to do this exact effect that they came up with themselves, um, but they wanted to use a Shogun wallet to do the transposition. That's basically what this is. It's a transposition between money and receipts um, from your hand to the wallet. It has nothing to do with a pocket. So the presentation really is, is a little off on that. So that's the second effect here. The third effect is called Cheeky Bet. And the description is a fun self-working bar bet with a kicker they won't see coming. So. This is basically Craig Petty taking a well-known effect and just applying a different presentation to it. He turns a well-known gimmicked triumph effect into like a sucker bet. Basically, you take out a deck and then you show them that you're shuffling it face up and a face down. You give them half and you ask them who, if they can write all the cards and you, you kind of place that bet who can do it faster. You tell them you're gonna give them a head start. Even though they do it pretty quickly, you show them that you did it without even having to touch your half. Um, that's basically what it is. I would never ever perform it like this. And it was kind of funny watching Craig Petty because he actually asked the spectator, do you know how to shuffle cards? And then he doesn't even let them shuffle. Of course he can't because the deck is highly gaffed. So that's the third effect. The next effect is called sponge bearing and the description is a sponge ball and a coin transpose multiple times until they finally combine into a huge metal ball. So this is a three phase transposition effect between a coin and a sponge ball. You're gonna have to acquire a large metal ball bearing if you wanna perform it the same exact way. And I can't help but notice that the whole routine looks almost exactly like an effect that Jay Sankey put out way back in the day, like 2008, on his DVD called Anytime, Anywhere. That effect was called Pawn Broker, and that was an impromptu, anytime, anywhere effect, 
where you borrow a coin, like a quarter and a ring, and they transpose between your hands three times. Finally, the last time, one goes to your pocket, the other one's in your hand. And it's almost exactly the same. The biggest difference is I would say is that Jay Sankey's version is cleaner because you can show your hands open completely multiple times, whereas here in Craig Petty's version, you really can't. And I like how in Jay Sankey's version, he even teaches you just a one phase version and he shows you a version even if you're not carrying a coin yourself to do. So I would recommend that you check out the Jay Sankey version. You're not gonna have to hunt down a huge metal ball bearing and it just feels more natural because it's off the cuff and impromptu. Moving along to the next effect is called triple threat. And this is probably the best effect on the lecture. Unfortunately, it uses a gaff that you probably can't even acquire anymore or it's gonna be very expensive, which is Todd Lassen's triple threat. Since Todd Lassen has passed away, likely the only alternative for you is going to be Jamie Schoolcraft's 3CM, which I, of course I happen to have because I buy almost all, all coin gimmicks out there. And this is a very expensive coin gaff. Um, but I thought that Craig Petty did a good job with this routine. I thought that he put it together pretty well. Um, it's a nice routine where you have a production you have uh, coins going uh, from one hand to the other, then you have coins vanishing, and then at the end you have a couple of jumbo coins that are produced. So I think the routine is probably the best one on here. Unfortunately, it's probably the one that you're definitely not gonna perform because you need to have the, the, the gimmick. You need to have a triple threat or a 3CM. So for probably 99.9% .9 of you, that nixes it for you right there. So unfortunately, you're not even going to be able to perform the best routine on the lecture. It's very disappointing because Craig Petty being a coin guy, I expected much more coin material and just better structured coin material. It's just very disappointing. Moving along, the next effect is called Triumph and their description is a perfect effect for walk around, no table needed, no force. It's an in the hands triumph with the extra phase of at the end, a four of a kind is produced of the spectator's freely named card. This is the only ungimmicked, ungaffed effect here on the lecture. And Craig Petty has done something very smart. He's taken a couple of different effects and put them together. To me, it seemed like he took Troy Hoosier's uh, triumph display effect and he combined that with Ian Moran's uh, Birds of a Feather from his Covert Magic DVD, because in that effect, it's a triumph effect that ends with you producing the four of a kind. Um, so the nice thing about the idea of this is that you have the spectator shuffle the deck and they freely take out any card that they want to, and by the end of the effect, you're actually gonna produce the other three mates to it. So it's very strong. Of course, it's not Craig Petty's idea, because this came from Ian Moran, and Craig Petty has actually altered Troy Hoosier's effect that if you're interested, you can find it in his book, Destroyers. It's called Triumph Display. And Craig Petty has changed some stuff. Instead of using what Troy Hoosier uses, he uses Troy Hoosier's slipstream and he uses a Browie reversal, which unfortunately I didn't really like. I would rather just stick with Troy Hoosier's handling. I think it's better. You could actually just stick with Troy Hoosier's handling and use Ian Moran's idea as the kicker and it would work just fine. Again, this is actually not a bad effect here on this lecture other than the handling could be improved because the Brawy reversal just doesn't look good, especially if you're going to perform this for any magician. Moving along, the next effect is called Card Under Box. And um, as you can expect, this is a multi-phase card under box effect. And, in a nutshell, it's basically James Brown's effect. He even mentions it in the explanation that James Brown gave him permission to explain it because he took James Brown's effect and just tried to streamline it. Although I think James Brown's version, which was originally put out as box clever, is much better. The misdirection is much better because um, Craig Petty openly loads the card, like for the first phase, which I didn't think looked really good, because if you compare it side by side with James Brown, James Brown, the first, the f like the first phase, he doesn't openly load it um, in front of the spectator, which I thought was just so much better. So I think you're going to like James Brown's version much better. It's just structured better and there's more misdirection. 
Next effect is called Quivering Transpo, and on Penguin, they don't even put a description of it, but this was probably the most basic way that you can use a Quiver Wallet. Again, if you don't have a Quiver Wallet, you're not gonna be performing this effect. And even if you do have a Quiver Wallet, you probably are not gonna be performing this effect because the effect in a nutshell is you have a card signed by a spectator, and then it's folded into four quarters and you tell a spectator that you're gonna to try to get it into the wallet and then you show them that you have a coin and you put the coin in the wallet and then you hold the card, the card changes to the coin, they can open up the wallet and find that their signed card is inside. The problem is that there's an ugly ditch involved, which I didn't like and because of that, when you watch that, you'll be like, I'm not doing that either. Um, it's just such a rudimentary way of using a Quiver Wallet. There's so many better ways to use a Quiver Wallet. I would recommend that you, you don't do this. Although, I don't know, maybe somebody out there might like it. So the next effect is called Invisible Cards Across. And this actually came from Craig Petty's Invisible Deck project that he recently put out. In this effect, three cards are selected and they transpose. Um, and uh, they're apparently you don't do anything. So it looks very magical. The trade-off is that you need to buy two invisible decks, take them apart, put them back together, all for this one effect, um, just to get that effect of a transposition of three cards. Um, there's so many other better cards across effects out there that I would recommend instead you take a look at an effect like, for instance, like Darwin Ortiz's Passing Through. That effect is so much more practical and it's just as magical because the spectator will instantly see uh, the cards transpose. It looks very, very magical to them. And you don't have the trade-off of having to buy two invisible decks, take them apart, all of this craziness. It's just, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's like trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. Finally, the last effect on the lecture is called Forecast, and this is an any card at any number prediction where the spectator shuffles, they deal down, and they find their named card at their named number. Now, this was the effect I told you guys uses three decks, and one of them has to be a memorized deck. This is basically a marriage of Al Baker's card at any number effect with a principle that Martin Sanderson put out on his uh, corporate close-up, which was called Storm Force 7. The biggest problem with this is that number one, it is not an any card at any number effect. No, it's a card at any number effect. So that's really what it is. Um, the other issue with it is it's just like so much work for what little you're gonna get out of it. If you're gonna go through the trouble of learning a memorized deck, then there's so many other better memorized deck card any number or any card any number effects out there and i would recommend that you guys check out one of my latest reviews that had to do with top five any card at any number effects i don't think anyone is going to go through the trouble to put all this together even though craig petty says that this is his favorite any card any number effect i really highly doubt that maybe it is who knows but i don't think it's going to be your favorite any card at any number effect so let's get into the rating and then just some final thoughts. So I rated this as 2.08 out of 5. And here are the reasons for that. For originality and for novelty, I would rate this as 1 out of 5. There's nothing really original here. Craig Petty didn't come up with anything here himself. He basically just took other people's ideas and put them together. So really originality, there's not a whole lot here. Uh, for creativity, I would give him two and a half out of five, which is like half. And the main reason for that is because he was creative in coming up with some kicker endings to these effects. Although, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of creativity. And I think he could have improved the structure of some of these other routines. I do think that the triple threat routine was creative too. So I think that was also creative. But that being said, uh, the other effects were not exactly that creative. Uh, the teaching, I would give him 5 out of 5. I thought he did an excellent job teaching the routines. He went through them very slowly, very meticulously. I thought that was excellent. For practicality, I'd have to rate that as 1 out of 5. I don't think any of this stuff is practical, and I think you're going to be very disappointed that you can't perform half of this stuff because you don't even have the gimmicks, the products, or the gaffes at home to be able to perform this stuff. Um, in terms of magic theory presentational tips, I have to rate that as 2 out of 5 because... 
He didn't really go over any real tips how to improve your magic. Again, I don't give him one out of five. I give him two out of five because he does go over some small tips during the explanation of the routines that could help you. And then finally, for the price, I would rate it as one out of five. And the main reason is because I think for $40, I think you're paying way too much for this. I think maybe if he charged, if they charged half for it, it might be more realistic in terms of a value. So my final rating for this review is 2.08 out of five. I would recommend that you don't pick up this lecture. I don't think it's worth it. I think that you're ending up getting a bag of tricks um, that rely on props and gimmicks that you likely don't have to perform these effects that can probably be done in a similar or easier way without half as many gaps or gimmicks. Um, that's really what I think overall. I think if you pick this up, you'd be really disappointed. As usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them for me below. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning into my magic reviews, and I'll see you on the next one.